We set up another compost heat exchanger for our greenhouse this year and took a whole bunch of video shots as we went along, and so I'll try to narrate now and explain. This is the shot when it was all said and done, and I'll explain how it went. This is what it looked like the other day. We've got some panels covering over the greenhouse and some trees that had to be moved. These were healed in trees for the nursery. They got moved to another spot. And now we can start moving around the mulch that was laying in front of our compost heating experiments from years past, get it renovated. Our friend George keeps an eye on things and we spread out the material, get it smoothed out. And Lenny keeps an eye on things from a distance. The dogs kept in orbit the whole time. Here we were uh, trialing the layout of some panels that we are experimenting with. These are R19 panels that we got from a local Amish uh, place and really nice rigid foam board insulation. We took some scrap old pieces of sheet metal roofing and we stitched them together. So basically they would make a sandwich that would wrap around each of these R19 boards. And you can see the chickens are helping out. We've got some quick clamps that facilitate the process and keep things pinned down. Basically, these are three foot by four foot rigid panels that have locust blocks on the end to hold the insulation in position. Some more quick clamps, a whole bunch of roofing screws, and we have these rigid reusable R19 panels that can help uh, hold the heat in for the system. We packed every last little gap with some unwashed sheep's wool uh, so that could create some dead air space in there. And George, of course, was very interested in the wool part of it. He was checking that out pretty thoroughly. Lenny enjoyed the sun in the late day there. And the next day we had the ingredients we needed. This is another side project. We made a quick low tunnel while we were at it off to the side. And what we needed in order to make the compost heating system is compost. And so we're pulling that from the deep litter system in our chicken yard, which needed to come out anyway. And I started by making some piles, a mix of some of the bedding from the chicken coop and then some of the overheated compost from their winter run back and forth. And we needed to clean out the coop anyway. So we went pretty strong on the coop clean out as the ingredients. And you can see it was not much time before we had a really significant pile to pull from. When Juan showed up today, he had a truck full of steaming wood chips. So that'll be both a source of heat, but also a source of good carbon. And we dumped some of that first to make a base pad for our whole system. And you can see one of the panels in position, two panels, the dogs are inspecting. We use some metal T-post to hammer them in. And so now we have three panels that are uh, insulating the north and west wall of this compost heating system. And we should be ready to start loading it in. And of course, George went in and took some of the <laughs> some, some of the wool out, but that's okay. We can pack that back in. Pallets along the bottom will allow aeration into the compost, and then we can begin the process of dumping the deep bedding system from the chicken yard, from the coop, uh, onto this area. The first layer is applied, and of course George is inspecting for any bones or any debris that he might be interested in. Now we're going to start running a PEC circuit through this, and this will be what draws the heat off in the form of water later on. And we're making some loops here. Juan had the idea of large loops and small loops uh, in each layer, and so informally we're doing those as we go. We set up a bilge pump with a little battery in a nearby pond to pull water and get some hydration into the compost, uh, the bedding material as we went. So something we learned last year is that the compost stalled, the heating process stalled because it dried out. And so this year, as we're applying each layer, we're soaking it down with pond water. And even though that's cold, it's going to add a lot of necessary hydration to keep the composting process alive and awake. Cool. Here we're adding a ton more carbon. We're going to need that in order to absorb the excess nitrogen, the ammonia from the deep bedding method from our coop. And so each layer gets a combo of 
bedding and then wood chips. And here we're going with really strong charcoal application directly up against the area where heat exchange starts to happen into the greenhouse itself. We'll make a follow-up video which explains in more detail why this is uh, where it is, but basically we're creating a lo-fi charcoal filter for the air that gets pulled into that space later on. And again, we've got the hose running with lots of moisture being added layer after layer. Couple of wheelbarrows of super nutrient dense chicken bedding, piping hot, and then some nice wood chips to uh, cover those. Now we've got some insulated blankets that we found on the side of the road to hold it all together. And we're back to the first shot. This is leaves on top, leaf bags in the front. Let the heating begin. We'll make an update soon once we have a tank and a water exchange in position. Thanks for watching.